So I want to introduce our first speakers for today, a little early, so you have a little more time than you thought, which is great. And um, these are two, two old friends. Oh, I shouldn't say old friends. That makes it sound like you're old, doesn't it? These are two really interesting characters <laughs> that I've known for some time. That can cover a lot of territory. <laughs> it sure can. So let me tell you a few things about these guys. Um, they are in, um, oh, here comes somebody else. They are, they are in Copenhagen or in that vicinity. They have, Klaus has been attending to, uh, attending conferences in the United States for years. And he used to be a volunteer at the TAMs and the different kinds of events, the, the amazing meetings of the JREF. I got to make sure I'm mm -hmm. clear at the amazing meetings. He's also been to SciCon. And they were able to come out to SciCon in Vegas a few years ago to attend because they had sued someone. I hope I'm not giving away anything that they were going to talk in their oh. talk who had oh. used their, their copyrights on their, on their channel for the 911 thing. And they were able to sue somebody and that person had to pay a fee had to pay pay them and gave them enough money that they were both able to travel to to Vegas to attend SciCon. And that just is like one of the most wonderful stories. I don't think anybody's ever had that happen. I, I as far as I know, I've never heard of anybody actually winning an award from one of these one of these people and, and then using it to to come over here. Um, Mark Edward and I went to Copenhagen in 2019 and uh, Klaus took I'm not going to say, Klaus, don't freak out what it is, the surprise. No, I will never reveal that. He has a surprise. So anybody who comes to Copenhagen, yeah. yes, he will, he will put you, give you a tour of, it's a beautiful city. And um, there's a lot of historical sites there where, you know, that are the typical touristy kind of things, the typical um, neat, really amazing things that anybody can see. But Klaus has one stop on his tour that I can't talk about because it's a surprise, no. but it is relevant to the skeptic community. And it's really kind of cool. Yeah. Um, the only, the only suggestion I would give to people who are going to Copenhagen in the future on a tour with Klaus is to make sure that you are, you get your stamina up because he is really got a tour set up. And those cobblestones are so uncomfortable on your feet. <laughs> you got to wear oh, good shoes. Got to wear good shoes. Yes. Lots of great things to see up there. Well, it's um, a big city. It, well, it's walkable. There's a Scientology building there that you, that you can go see as well. Oh, yeah. Yes. Wonderful oh. parks. Don't see the little mermaid statue that's there. No. No. Uh -huh. It's only like There's a few a feet tall, isn't it? Why do you think it's called the Little Mermaid? Oh, because <laughs> the tour and the tour bus is all stopped there and they take pictures of people by the, it's just, I, I've i never seen it, but I, I've been warned off. Anyway, so let me pin you guys. Uh, let me uh, remove my pin and I'm going to, let me see how I do this. If I pin... I can add while you look for it that that the amount that we won from the trial was in the neighborhood of nine thousand dollars, and uh, and as we said when we were there, we said it was the first time that someone went to to join your your meetings on a scholarship from a from a conspiracy theorist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I've spotlighted okay. one. How do I do the other? Janice, can you tell oh me? God. No, Janice. Um, Adrian, can you? You know what? Maybe I should just do that. Adrian, can you spotlight the two? Okay. Uh, so Klaus and what's the other name? Steen. S T. My name is Steen. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking for it. It's uh. He's got a guitar behind him. Okay. Well, I'm just... I've made them co-hosts so they can share their screens or whatever they need right. to do. I'm still looking. I'll I'll give it a try. I could spotlight one, but I I'm not sure how I spotlight. You should be able to do two because I've done that before, but it's been a while. Add spotlight. Okay, here. Oh, oh I did it. Oh, okay, good because I just was about to do that and then he disappeared. So I guess it's because you spotlighted him. Dun, da, da, da. So you guys can uh, let's mute everybody, please. If you have questions, please go ahead and put them in your um 
in the chat. And YouTube also will keep track and see if there's anything there. And um, everybody will go, ahead, Adrian or um, Deborah, if you'll mute everybody and then Klaus and Steen, you'll just have to unmute yourselves. And, and one other note for those, especially if you're on a PC, you want to make sure that when you go to view at the top right, it's under speaker, not gallery. Otherwise, you're going to just see everybody small still. Okay, put everybody under speaker. And then when we're done with that and we, we're ready to go to back to the group again, you I think you have to go to gallery so that you can see everybody in the little spot. That's correct. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's also I'm gonna, ready. There's hmm? also going to be a PowerPoint uh, as part of the picture. Just yeah, sure. you've got uh, permissions to make it that way, so go for it. Yeah. And if you have audio that you want to show, make sure that you click the button at the bottom that says audio. show sound. Okay, let's see. How does that work? It looks great. Okie dokie. Adrian, can you mute us all? Yeah, I think everybody's muted. Oh, but I'm not. Hopefully I'm not either. No, I just kind of did it individually, so I just forgot okay. to do you. We really have to come up with a better term than do you. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah, <laughs> no worries. Okay. Uh, just, just for starters, it's not that I want to postpone anything. I, I just want to let you know that I've spoken to some people who expect it to begin in 20 minutes. So, but... Um, on the other hand, they can see it uh, on True. YouTube. Yeah. So. yeah. <laughs> Recording <laughs> in progress. Okay, let's go then. All Steve. right. Yeah. Go? Okay, sure. Okay. Okay. Ah, oh, here we go. Welcome to our lecture, Face Palm: The Absurdities of uh, the Truth Movement. My name is Klaus Larsen, which makes the other guy Steve Svenholm. And we have for more than 10 years uh, investigated conspiracy theories, mainly regarding 9-11, but also done more broad research into the subject. Conspiracy theorists present their alternative explanations as far better supported than the official accounts. The official accounts are all lies, you see, but in reality, the conspiracy theories are not only lacking in evidence, they are also absurd and often contradict each other. In this lecture, we will take a closer look at what the absurdities are. And we will also explain the thinking behind these problems and how the truth movement handles the absurdities in a truly Orwellian manner. We're not gonna address the issue of whether the evidence claimed, by, claimed to exist by conspiracy theorists is real or not. That issue is already settled. 20 years after the terror attack on September 11, 2001 and counting, Conspiracy theorists haven't been able to present a coherent case that the terror attack was not planned and carried out by the Al-Qaeda, as the official investigations have concluded. Instead, conspiracy theorists claim that cabal, powerful politicians, high-ranking military personnel, the media, and so on and so forth were behind it. However, conspiracy theorists have only been able to present an incoherent case. And it's this incoherence that we will describe in this lecture, where we examine how well the conspiracy theories about 9-11 hold up to a logical scrutiny. Now, we can only include a fraction of the hundreds of claims, so we have focused on the major ones. Now, the claims are not made by all members of the truth movement, but they are the, currently the trending ones. And to that effect, uh, Steen will play the role of the conspiracy theorist, while I will play the role of the party pooper skeptic. Now, please note that this mock conversation that follows, it's not a realistic one. We do it this way to illustrate that the claims uh, uh, and how absurd they are. It would never happen so smoothly in real life because the conspiracy theorists um, would never just accept that their claims are shown to be absurd. We would personally also uh, always leave them room to counter our responses. So in a world, word or a handful, we are cutting to the chase here, not to be arrogant, but to be pedagogic. So, Steen, yeah. donning your imaginary tinfoil hat, what happened on that fateful day more than 20 years ago? 
Well, the official account is a lie. It wasn't Osama bin Laden and 19 hijackers who planned and carried out the attack. There were no hijackers. The four planes were all remotely controlled. Flight 175 didn't hit the World Trade Center 2, Flight 77 didn't hit the Pentagon, and Flight 93 didn't crash in Pennsylvania. As for the events in New York, World Trade Center 1, 2, and 7 were destroyed by controlled demolitions. Explosives and nanothermite were placed in the buildings beforehand. After the attack, there was a massive cover-up. Okay, uh, that is a lot to process. Uh, maybe we better take it step by step. Could you tell me about Osama bin Laden? Well, of course. Did you, for instance, know that the bin Laden family and the Bush family are all business partners? And did you know that Osama bin Laden was trained and paid by the CIA? And did you know that Osama bin Laden's family was airlifted out of the U.S. shortly after the day of the attack? Well, actually, yes, I did. But what I don't know is why you point to Osama bin Laden. Why is he relevant if he isn't behind the attack? A while ago, you dismissed Osama bin Laden as irrelevant. You said he didn't do it. And then you do your best to link him to the Bush family and to the attack itself. That makes no sense whatsoever. If you don't think that Osama bin Laden was behind the attack, any reference to him is nonsense. You are contradicting your own claim. Now, you said also said that there were no hijackers. I did. Oh, sorry. In, the, in the time leading up to the attack, the CIA ordered visas for the 15 of the 19 people claimed to be hijackers. And also, the government procedures regarding hijacking were changed. So it would take longer for the authorities to intervene in case of hijackings. Furthermore, Vice President Dick Cheney was in control of NORAD, so he could make sure that the military wouldn't prevent the planes from reaching their targets. Yeah, but if all of this is true, it means that there were hijackers and that the planes were in fa fact hijacked. Otherwise, it makes no sense to seek to make hijackings easier, only not to have hijackers at all. What happened during the 109 minutes between the first hijacking and the last plane crashing? Flight 93? Well, one of the passengers on board Flight 93 made a phone call saying that he saw a gun. And Dick Cheney, he issued a stand down order so that the planes heading towards their goals were not to be shut down, but were allowed to hit the targets. There was also plenty of time for the Air Force to shoot down the planes. And the air defense was even warned 20 minutes earlier than recorded. Yeah, but again, all, the, all of this points to there being hijackers. Why would you issue a, a stand-down order if the planes were not hijacked? Uh, what about some of the passengers who called in saying that the planes had been hijacked? You know, it was impossible in 2001 to use a cell phone from a passenger plane. The reports of phone calls from passengers and of hijackers were all hoaxes. But hold on, didn't you just say that one of the passengers on board flight 93 made a phone call saying that he ha saw a gun, you're contradicting yourself again. You know, uh, perhaps we should just move on to the planes. If okay. the planes weren't hijacked, what happened? Well, you know, all four planes were remotely controlled. As for Flight 93, it wasn't crashed by the hijackers as the official account claims. Instead, the plane was shut down. Did you know that debris wasn't, uh, was found at the crash site in Pennsylvania? No debris was found at the crash site in Pennsylvania. So Flight 93 was first remotely controlled, then shot down despite there was a stand down order not to shoot it down. And then mm -hmm. either they, whoever are behind it, removed the plane parts from Flight 93 from the crash site. Maybe it was shot down elsewhere where nobody discovered the debris while a crater suddenly appeared out of nowhere? Or perhaps, I mean, did they dig up the uh, dig the crater in advance, but fail to put plane parts in it? Um, it doesn't make any sense, okay? Why don't we move on to flight 77? Was there no plane at the Pentagon either? No, there wasn't. No plane hit the Pentagon. Flight 77's route towards the Pentagon was impossible. 
Nobody could make that sharp right turn just before the plane was supposed to hit the Pentagon. And also Flight 77 couldn't fly so fast, so close to the ground. The most damning evidence, however, is that no surveillance cameras show that a plane hit the building. But what about the debris from a plane found on the lawn at the impact site as well as inside the building? Ah, those plane parts didn't belong to a Boeing 757. They came from another type of plane. Let me get this right. You say that there was no plane at the Pentagon, but that something else caused the big explosion and the damage. Then they placed what was supposed to be plane debris from a Boeing 757, only they had prepared parts from a different type of plane. Why would they swap plane type? And, you know, why, also, why would they prepare and place plane debris at the Pentagon, but not at the crash site in Pennsylvania? And why would you remotely control a plane that wasn't intended to hit its target anyway? What about Flight 175? Well, it wasn't Flight 175 that hit the World Trade Center 2. The plane that came in was going way too fast for a Boeing 767. And also the plane engine found later in the streets of Manhattan wasn't even from a Boeing 767. So Flight 175 was swapped with a different plane type. One was that, that was moderated so it could fly faster than a Boeing 767. Yet photos of, and videos clearly show a plane that is indistinguishable from a Boeing 767? <sighs> what about Flight 11? Well, that was really Flight 11, only it was remotely controlled. So Flight 93 wasn't there, Flight 77 wasn't there, Flight 175 wasn't there but was swapped with another plane, but right. Flight 11 was there. Okay, yeah. this is going really, really well. Not. What about the catastrophe in New York City following the attack? You said that the World Trade Center 1 and 2, 1, 2 and 7 were destroyed by explosives and nanothermite placed in the buildings beforehand. Could you elaborate a little bit there? Of course I can. The official account claims that the three buildings collapsed due to fires, and that's a lie. After the planes had hit the World Trade Center 1 and 2, the jet fuel quickly burned out, leaving only few and small fires that couldn't have melted the steel. And when the World Trade Center 1 collapsed, the debris didn't damage the World Trade Center 7 much. Besides, steel-framed high-rises have never collapsed due to fires before. And that means it's impossible for these three buildings to collapse due to fires. Okay, so the buildings were not destroyed by fires, but by what? Well, you know, in the time leading up to the attack, between 10 and 100 tons of explosives and nanothermite were secretly placed in all three buildings. This was done by people posing as maintenance workers. Wait a minute. There were usually many thousands of people working in the buildings and none of them discovered anything unusual? Okay. You mentioned explosives. What about those? Well, many witnesses heard explosives and saw flashes of light. And photos also show symmetrical dust clouds emerging from the World Trade Center 1 and 2. Those flashes of light and dust clouds are signs of controlled demolitions. And also, all three buildings collapse suddenly, symmetrical, in free fall and in their own footprints. The concrete in World Trade Center 1 and 2 was polarized and the steel was fragmented. You can see this easily when you look at the photos and the videos from the collapses and compare them to big buildings being destroyed by controlled demolitions. Let me get this right. Someone, they, secretly planted explosives in buildings filled with people who didn't notice. A procedure that usually takes months with full access to every crook and nanny in the building and makes a lot of noise drilling holes for the explosives. Then they deliberately waited 56 minutes and 102 minutes after the impact of the planes to detonate the explosives all of which was captured on many videos and seen by millions of people all around the world. Yet, nobody on that day or in the months, even years after, saw the destruction of the buildings as controlled demolitions. You needed to be told that the collapses were indistinguishable from controlled demolitions. Now, you also mentioned nanothermite. What is that? Yeah. 
Uh, Nanothermite is a compound secretly developed by the US military. It can melt steel, which is what caused the three buildings to collapse, along with explosives, of course. And in the months after the catastrophe, there were pools of melted metal at ground zero. You know, Niels Harit, the Danish professor emeritus uh, of chemistry, he has found tons of unreacted nanothermite in the dust from ground zero. So they planted both explosives and nanothermite in the buildings, yet when the buildings were demolished, they looked like buildings being destroyed by explosives only. Why would you use nanothermite? You know, what about the cover-up then? Who really did this? Larry Silverstein, who owned, uh, he owned the, build, uh, the World Trade Center 7, and he had leased the World Trade Center 1 and 2. In the weeks before the attack, he had insured against terror attacks from planes. Silverstein later ordered the controlled demolition of World Trade Center 7. He actually said so in a documentary. The day before the attack, Donald Rumsfeld admitted that the Pentagon was missing $2.3 trillion. Rumsfeld had knowledge that the, ter the terror attack would take place the next day, knowing that the news of the missing trillions would be buried in the massive media cover of the attack. Furthermore, the hijacked Flight 77 was intended to impact the Pentagon at the exact spot where the documents would reveal the fraud would be. The impact and the subsequent damage and fires were then to destroy the evidence. The missing money was used to wage war in Iraq and Afghanistan. You know, the media was in on it too. For instance, the BBC, they revealed on live television that the World Trade Center 7 had collapsed 20 minutes before it really happened. So Larry Silverstein, Donald Rumsfeld and the BBC revealed the plot as well as their own involvement in the world's largest terror attack. Why would they do that? I mean, are the people behind it, are they morons? Also, you said earlier that Flight 77 did not hit the Pentagon, but now you do. Did Flight 77 hit the Pentagon or not? How can you call this a cover-up? Well, it is, or it was. For instance, uh, it took several court trials to release images from the surveillance cameras from the Pentagon. And you know, no images showed a plane. So they are powerful enough to stage a false flag terror attack, but they can't prevent the courts from revealing that it was all a hoax. Furthermore, if they can place plane parts that didn't even come from a Boeing 757, but they can't make some fake photos of a plane. You know, I hesitate to ask, but do you have more? Of course, I always have more. You know, Osama bin Laden, he wasn't wanted by the FBI for 9-11. And the video of him, Osama bin Laden, admitting to the attack, it was faked. The translation was a hoax. He didn't admit to the attack. And also the person in the video, it wasn't even Osama bin Laden. Hold on. They can produce a fake video of Osama bin Laden, but not fake photos showing a plane at the Pentagon. Also, if the video doesn't show Osama bin Laden, it's irrelevant what the person says. It's only relevant if the person is Osama bin Laden. The person in the video cannot both be Osama bin Laden and not Osama bin Laden. You are contradicting yourself here once again. As for the warrant, they can stage a huge false flag operation, yet they can't get the FBI to issue a warrant for Osama bin Laden's arrest. I mean, who are they? Are they completely powerless? Yeah, but you know, people have been killed for knowing and revealing the truth. Yeah, well, m the most known people claiming that 9-11 was a hoax. They're still alive. Alex Jones is alive. Richard Gage is alive. Christopher Boleyn is alive, Eric Hofschmidt is alive, Niels Harrit, whom you mentioned before, all are known because they have exposed the hoax, yet they are very much alive and active two decades after the attack. They, whoever are behind it, seem to be killing the wrong people. You know what, Stine, I think we are done here. I think so. so. Yeah, fair enough. So. Well, while Steve takes off his imaginary tinfoil hat, allow me to summarize what the truth movement overall is claiming. The terror attack on 9-11 was a huge false flag operation 
planned and carried out by a secret cabal. The cabal is omnipotent. The pl plan happened without anyone spotting it on the day or in the weeks or months after. But the cabal is also at the same time so incompetent that all you have to do is Google to find evidence to reveal who did it and their whole plan. A plan that makes no sense whatsoever and even contradicts itself. I see that scene is back from the rabbit hole. Bring it on home. Yeah. Did I win an Oscar? No. Any no. movie will, of course, have its point of disagreement. Um, you know, the animal rights movement, they cannot agree on which animals should have rights and which shouldn't. And the feminist movement cannot agree on whether Muslim women wearing hijabs is a good or bad thing. And uh, the skeptical movement, they can't agree. We can't agree on whether to include religious believers or not. But the points of disagreement pose a different problem for the truth movement. We're not talking about disagreements on ideological issues or technical details. No, here we're talking about whether physical objects were present at a specific place at a specific time. Either there were hijackers or there weren't hijackers. Either there were planes or there were no planes. The truth movement has decided to accept all viewpoints on all issues. It doesn't matter if you believe that there were planes or if you believe there weren't, as long as you believe that the official account is a lie. The main goal is not to find out what the truth is. The truth is whatever you make it in the moment. And as long as you focus on the external enemy. Even the truth movement fight among themselves, sometimes literally over which truth is the true one. But in public, they always argue not in favor of one alternative truth, but in favor of one falsehood, namely the official account. So, ideologically, the truth movement is thus a counter-truth movement. And ethically, that makes the truth movement fundamentally corrupt. And it's that corrupt foundation that makes it impossible for the truth movement to obtain their goal of a so-called in new independent investigation of 9-11. Because those who can instigate such an investigation will never do so as long as the truth movement hold these conflicting views. Can anyone imagine a congressional hearing 25 years or more after the attack, starting with, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, we are here to find out if there were planes or not. Oh, and also if there were hijackers or not. That is absurd. And with those three words, we put a nail in the coffin of the uh, truth movement. That's it from us. Over to Q&A. Well, I can't hear you uh, clapping anyway, so, but thanks. <laughs> Susan? I'm here, I'm here. I'm just unmuting myself. Very, very good. So unscreen share. Oh, 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 hang on. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I have, I have the power now. No, no, you no, have no. the power. <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Hey, I'm still the host. There you go. Okay, there so now I want to make myself uh, spotlight yeah. gallery. Hold on just one second. That was great, you guys. I'm so glad that you, you, you came all the way over here from Denmark to give that talk. Oh, thank you, Janice, for putting your urge. Why do I keep seeing Janice? I am just really not okay today. <laughs> I love Janice, but Adrian probably did that. Yeah, I did. Okay, cool. So we've got a lot of questions and yes, we did start a little early. So um, sorry, anybody who, who just showed up, which was only a couple of people that showed up at 1030. So it'll be fine. Here we are in 2022, right? So one of the questions that we have received is probably the question that you get the most often, which is, oh, here, I gotta move this over. Why are we still here? with people, why is this such a huge deal still 2022 in January? I mean, what is going on? Either either there's a lot of money in this to be made from this community who continues to not, um, to perpetuate this, or a political motive, which money obviously is still in the same area. Why are we still talking about this in such great detail when there is no evidence, as you guys just showed, it's all bull hockey. Why are we still here? Who wants to take that question? I'll, I can try. 
um, if you have invested yourself to such a degree that your identity has become that conspiracy theory or any conspiracy theory, it's very, very difficult to let go and admit that either you were fooled or even worse, that you have lied to people. If, uh, if, you, if you really become identical with your, uh, with your beliefs and you are known, especially in, uh, out in the world, as someone who believes so and so, uh, this and that uh, conspiracy theory, it's very difficult to let go. It, it, it becomes almost impossible. It is possible, but it happens once in a while, but we rarely hear a hardcore uh, conspiracy theorist admit that he was wrong or she was wrong. So, can, I, can I just do a, a quick follow up on that? Yes. Um, I agree uh, with what, what Klaus said, and, and also um, the beliefs in, the, in these conspiracy theories, they seem to also have seasons. Uh, for instance, uh, the belief in, uh, in the assassination of JFK, that, that it was CRA or whatever, uh, some sort of conspiracy that was behind it, uh, it, it varies from year to year. In 2013, there were about 20 percent point more people who believed in the conspiracy theory than the, the, the following year. And uh, a good reason why this, uh, why this is so is probably because that was the 50th anniversary. So there was more mentioning of the, the conspiracy theory in the, in the media. And we know from other uh, research that people tend to believe in conspiracy theories even if they just hear about them. So, 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 um, and that, that's, it's a bit strange that it's, it, it's like that, but if you, we are all prone to conspiracy theories just by, uh, by hearing about them. Um, so yeah, so it's, that could be part of the, uh, the answer. I'm sorry, I muted myself just in case there's noises in my background. Is there money in this? Yes, to some extent. Uh, for instance, uh, the largest for various, uh, for generous uh, amounts of large, the largest uh, organization, Architects and Engineers for 9-11 Truth, uh, they paid for a, uh, an investigation uh, uh, done by Leroy Halsey from the University of Alaska in Fairbanks. Uh, he was, uh, he invested he investigated uh, whether uh, the National Institute of uh, Standards and Technology, their conclusion about uh, World Trade Center 7, was that true or not? And he came up uh, and uh, they collected about, I think it was about 300,000 US dollars for that uh, investigation alone. So there is money out there, uh, but it's not, we're not talking millions here. Alex Jones is probably the one who has benefited the most uh, monetary wise because he has literally a, or he had a media empire. Uh, so yeah, there is money, but it's centered on very, very few people. They have a also very strong... There, yeah, and, and it seems also, because that's a funny thing, because Niels Harry, the Danish uh, chemistry uh, professor that, w that we mentioned, he doesn't seem to earn that much money uh, on this. But still, he has been traveling the world and doing more than 500 lectures all over. Um, so there might be a lot of status in it um, that, that they are uh, reaching for as well. Because he has this kind of, uh, he's kind of a guru amongst his followers. Um, so it's, it's kind of a, 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 a lifestyle for him as well. And there's also this problem that Klaus mentioned that the, if, you, if you leave the, uh, uh, the mainstream belief, then your, your social network uh, decreases. Uh, and that means that you only have, you, you have, you lose a lot of friends and then you have a lot less friends. Um, so imagine that you were to leave that also, then you would be left with no friends at all because no one would believe you in, 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 on both sides. So it's very hard to get out again. Mm -hmm. In the skeptical community, we've had a, view, a very few uh, people who have left 
this world of conspiracy theories and so on and actually have tried to have a life or career outside of it maybe being the opposite i'm thinking of somebody like not like kenny biddle who wasn't super prominent as a as a ghostbuster kind of thing you know that was really into the ghost hunting and now is uh part of the skeptic community making a uh, a life and a world out of it but there's other people who've done it natalie grams grams and um uh, Brit Hermes, who have left the the cancer, I mean the the homeopathic and the alternative medicine world, and have, have come out. But I don't think they've made any money or of any kind necessarily. I think they've written a book or something. I think Natalie Grams has written a book on home homeopathic methods. But yeah, so there isn't a huge pull to bring over into the skeptic community and myth that they that they were you know, maybe from an inside, oh, that'd be interesting, an inside look at the 9-11 world from an insider who, that would be, I, I just don't think there's the money, and like you said, that they would lose everybody, but all their friends. There's a, there's a horrifying example. Uh, what was his name, Klaus? Char Charlie Weitz? Charlie, Charlie Weitz, I think it's... Uh, yeah, Charlie Weitz. Yeah. He was an American who uh, participated, oh, a British, I, I can't remember, he, he was a Brit, wasn't he? He, he no. participated in, in a BBC documentary uh, called Conspiracy Road Trip. And he, he was uh, a, a true, uh, he was a truther. And, um, but during this, uh, this uh, uh, documentary, he changed his view uh, and he realized that he was wrong. But afterwards, leaving his former beliefs, he received a lot of uh, death threats. And uh, I think he was attacked as well. Oh. Yeah. yeah. Huh. I remember that conspiracy road trip. Trip. I think Michael Shermer participated in that. It was a bus, and they went around and looked at things. Is that what I'm thinking of? Or yes, happened in yeah, LA, yeah. and I don't think they convinced anybody. <laughs> well, they convinced him. Oh, they just well, I mean, very few people. Well, maybe the lurkers, people who are watching. So we have a few other questions for you. Um, this one from Tracy: What's the difference between the truth movement and this recent post-truth movement? what is the post oh uh well the truth movement is uh that's the conspiracy theorists who co concentrate on 9-11 uh, uh it's the basically the uh, it uh, the movement started around 2003 four maybe five uh and in earnest in 2006 uh it's uh rare uh that we see a, a movement per se about a specific uh, conspiracy theory. Of course, we have now the uh, QAnon. Uh, that's also a movement centered around a bunch of conspiracy theories. Uh, when, when you say post-truth movement, uh, I think uh, you're talking about, uh, you know, the whole Trump area, populist, uh, uh, Fox News, they, they don't really give uh, a hoot about what the truth is, because it's, uh, as Stephen Colbert said, uh, he used uh, the ter term truthiness. It sounds truth, true, therefore it is true. So uh, can, can we can clarify what actually is meant by the post-truth movement? Because I haven't heard that, that phrase before. I'm not sure. Okay. So if Tracy, if you want to clarify that, I have another question for you. Yeah. Uh, they, um, okay. Well, there, there are people who um, go more on feelings. They feel strongly in their heart that truth that Trump won, so it must be true. That's what I've heard, but I, I'm not an expert on this. But they put feelings ahead of facts. Uh, thanks. Tracy. Well, that, that that's general to uh, to to uh, that's not specific for for post truth post truthers. The, the the original truthers do the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so from uh, Linda, do we have a do we have any kind of gauge of how how many people believe this? I know Steen had said that there's a lot of people who they just hear the conspiracy, like if they were asked on a survey or something, they would probably say yes, I believe it, not necessarily understanding really what they're they're saying. But do we have any gauge? Well, uh, uh, it's it's quite difficult to, to put a, a specific number on it because there are uh, due, due to uh, to Klaus's and, and my investigation, the research, there seems to be 
more, uh, several types of conspiracy theorists. We operate with uh, now three types of conspiracy theorists. Um, there's type one, uh, which there might be pretty many of, uh, maybe up to 50% of a population. So that's pretty many. But they seem to, their characteristics is that they, they believe in one or a very few conspiracy theories and they don't connect them. Then there's type two conspiracy theories. He connects everything. Uh, and he can't talk about anything else. The conspiracy theorist just intervenes his life and it just, just fills him up. He, he starts conversations uh, every time just uh, without, uh, without being provocated to it and talks about his conspiracy theories. It just, just fills his life. And then there's type three, uh, which we call the warriors. They are pretty much like type two, but the conspiracy theories are really not that important anymore. They just want to attack the establishment and they are active. Uh, type two is pretty passive. They just talk and talk and talk. Type three are ready to, to uh, perform violence. They're ready to attack. They are the types that uh, attacked the capital uh, oh, almost exactly one year ago. Um, so these three uh, kinds of uh, conspiracy theories we distinguish between. There are very few of type three, luckily, so far, it seems. And when we say very few, it's probably they were all there at the Capitol. Um, and uh, there are uh, quite, not many, but perhaps between one and 5% of type two in a population. But they have a lot of impact because they use the social media very much. Um, so they're very loud. Mm -hmm. They're not very many, but they're very loud. And then, of course, as I said, uh, type one, there might be very many uh, of those, but they don't pose a threat, uh, really. Um, not until they change into becoming uh, type two or even type three. A long question, but I hope it was... Uh, no, no. Um, you've given a talk. Or I've, I've seen at least, I think, Klaus has given a talk on this which yeah. you put together. And I think I've read about this too. It's really fascinating. If you could put a link in the chat, I would appreciate it. Maybe we'll attach it to the YouTube video too. But this idea of these three different personality kind of conspiracy theory types is, should be getting, I think you should get a lot more coverage because I think what you guys have done is really brilliant how you've kind of summarized it into this three, like you just did. I, uh, I think people should be more interested in that. Is, has that been in an article in Skeptical? It, has that been an article in Skeptical Inquirer or Skeptic or anything like that that I have? I can't remember. <laughs> no, not yet. We are uh, putting the finishing touch on uh, on an article up, about uh, the three types and pros possible uh, subtypes as well. Coming soon, coming soon. Okay, yeah, I think it's really brilliant the way you guys have, have done that. And let's get a link to that in the, in the uh, chat if we can. I also... So Mm -hmm. Can I interrupt for a second, sure. Susan? I've just been notified by Jeff and Rob Palmer that apparently chat has been disabled for many people, and we don't know why that would be. Um, is that, that is Jeff, weird. Did you know how to enable that? Like, where is that? I just wrote testing. So you, so it's okay for you? Yeah, it's yeah. okay for me too. And we've obviously been getting some, but we're just getting feedback now that people can't. Oh, Deborah Deborah? says she can chat. But awesome. we're all hosts. So I just can... says chat disabled is the bottom. Yeah. Yes. Oh, so I get that all too. the hosts well, maybe, are okay. So chat is disabled for anybody who's not a host. But that's yeah. odd because it's been, they've been able to chat earlier. I didn't They check. were. So something happened. Something got pushed or it just clicked wrong in the system because it happened. I went out of Zoom back and forth. Didn't make a difference. And I was wondering if it was only me, but apparently not. Yeah, and uh, Jeff just sent me a thing as well. So that's how I knew it was not. Okay, well, let's see what we can do here in a second. So if you guys have a question, also the YouTube channel is open. You can you can write there. Ah. I can also channel your thoughts. So that's another hey. thing is. Uh, so <laughs> I found it. I fixed it, I think. Oh, so I can people it. try put, putting stuff in the chat? Yeah, yeah. But it's not fixed now. It's fixed. Thank, Thank you. So oh, for future good. reference, what was that? Where'd you do that? I did that uh, in the chat box. There's a little dots down at the bottom and it says participant can chat with and no one was checked. And I don't know how that happened. It was obviously an accident. 
Yeah, you know, somebody who is an administrator must have done it because yes. that's not the selection that we have. It only says safe chat. Yeah. Yes, and so uh, that, uh, yeah, people who are hosts or co-hosts can see okay. that. Okay. So I just ch changed it to thank everyone, you guys. and it should be work. So thank thanks you. for letting us know. That's our. That's one of our our flummoxes. You got to have a few when you're doing no, something no, live no, like no, this. No, 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 no. You're not thinking. <laughs> you, they, it's a conspiracy. Well, somebody's already suggested that in chat. Really, yes, conspiracy. conspiracy. Your volume is lower. And, and you were playing the rational person on the, the discussion <laughs> and his was actually louder. Steen's was louder. So it was suggested that it's a conspiracy that, and it, it, it's a good point because, you know, such so anti-vaxxer yeah. community, they're loud. They are, they look like they they're everywhere. Yes. They look like they are the biggest group and they're not. <laughs> And they're a little tiny world and people don't want to intercede they're like okay i got my vaccines i'm not dealing with that person over there you know and it, it makes them look like they're prevalent when they're not <laughs> well uh, uh we have uh things are going to change on so social media uh we have uh sources everywhere seen and i and our sources in uh, the danish government uh tells us that uh there are some thing in the pipeline both for uh, for Denmark but also for the EU the European Union something will happen we don't know uh, what will happen but oh it's not it's not gonna uh, there will be uh, some rules or regulations coming up what they really? will be so uh, wait yeah, just for 911 truthers or no 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 for for uh, fake fake news or uh, Are, okay is this this in Denmark you're saying it's all for the uh, EU uh, for the EU, probably. It sounds like a uh, conspiracy. Something I should know about. No, no, it's called politics. Oh, <laughs> so I got a couple more chat uh, questions, which is nice. We went a little early. Thank you for bearing with me and doing that. Uh, it allows me to get a few more questions in here. Tracy has a question that says, "Can you give resources for learning how to check sources to distinguish fact from fiction, especially learning how to critically fact check internet sources?" Put them in the chat also. But can you give us a summary real quick? Well, the, we, we might put our own website mm -hmm. in because if, if at, at least that, that would be the, the best resource for checking, fact checking uh, uh, claims about 9-11 uh, because our, our website is both in Danish and, and in English. Okay. And that was a question I wanted to ask you too. Why? And, and got, uh, can, can I just uh, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, add to that, that on our website, there's a whole lot of uh, resources uh, uh, under the menu. Um, what's it called? Uh, documentation? Yes. Ah. Yes. So because we, we collect a lot of uh, all kinds of research that that is is relevant for for 9/11, but also in in a more broad in, in a broader scope uh, around conspiracy theories uh, in general. Fantastic. So uh, one of the questions that I want to ask is, you guys are in Denmark. What the heck that you're experts on something that happened in the United States? Is there a, oh, you have simple. a summation for that? Oh yeah, that's in, that's that's due to uh, the, the guy we mentioned, Neil Sherrod, uh, because he was he was very uh, he got a lot of media attention in Denmark when he uh, uh, published his report about nanothermite back in 2009. Uh, so that that actually uh, made Klaus and I uh, s sit down and and just think we we, we got to do some sort of debunking because debunking sites were only American at that time. Uh, so, but we've got one of the, the big shots here, so, so so we have to act on that. Um, so also, the, I I I was living in New York at the time of the attack. Oh, uh, so uh, when I moved back to Denmark a couple of years later, I ran into uh, some truthers. Uh, they were ha having a demonstration at the main central square in Copenhagen. And each one by one, I spoke to them. One by one, they lied to me. And that is a very, very bad idea. Don't, sorry for using the F word. I know it's a, uh, don't fucking lie to me, okay? <laughs> uh, that pisses me off. <laughs> so I went back and I wrote an article about it. And uh, Steen saw the article, and we began to we, and that's how we basically met each other, and we decided to uh, create 911facts.dk, and as they say, the rest is history. More people should lie to you, so <laughs> passionate about something, and maybe, maybe. Amazing. Think of very more than once. 
<laughs> From Jeff, he wants to know, you mentioned Alex Jones by name is someone who has run a successful grift by selling su silly supplements on the back of the 9-11 truth movement. Are there any other notable figures doing so specifically in this context? You're skipping a question, Susan. That was, I know. That was, uh, what I, know. Oh, okay. I will. I'll come back. Okay, okay. great. Um, I don't know. What Come on now. Well, well, uh, architects and engineers from Anglim Truth, they ha have these uh, uh, pledges for money for various projects. Mm. Uh, it doesn't uh, seem as I mean, their leader or then leader, he has now left the uh, the, uh, the organization, Rich Gage. Uh, he had a pretty neat uh, annual salary uh, with money coming in from uh, supporters, truthers. Uh, so, uh, but they are not selling uh, projects uh, or products per se. Uh, Alex Jones seems to have uh, cornered that market pretty well, at least in the US. We're not familiar with anything uh, uh, similar of that magnitude in uh, Denmark or in Europe. But we do have we do have uh, conspiracy theorists, especially during uh, the pandemic, who are trying to sell or uh, to sell uh, either uh, products or uh, lectures or uh, classes on how to improve your health without these uh, without the yeah, vaccines. So yeah, there is a market for it, definitely. In conspiracy land. Okay, let's go back to Sherry. She says, is there an effective way to reach those who believe in conspiracy theory to encourage them to look at the truth? We're, for instance, when we're talking to family or friends, you only just have like a couple minutes, a minute on this one. <laughs> well, the, no. the, short, the short answer is no. Uh, no. And I think there will be something as we will write about it in, in the same article that, that we mentioned earlier. Uh, there is an, a, a pretty effective way of... Uh, uh, talking to them and debating with them um, in order to to narrow it, it down um, and and we're going to be writing about that too in in, in that article that, that that we mentioned but it's very 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 difficult it's not impossible to to make them realize that they are on the wrong path here mm -hmm. uh, because it has as a as I said earlier it has it, it comes at a very big cost for them to leave the path that they are on now because it's it's such a narrow path, and they would have to. Uh, I, I actually, I think that what what you need to change that path would be uh, some sort of a revelation uh, to go into following another path, and that might even not uh, solve the problem because that would be changing one uh, strange or crazy belief with another crazy belief. Um, so it's it's close to impossible, and the the um, motivation probably has to come from uh, within. Mm -hmm. And how do, you, how do you put that into people? It's, it's, we're still looking for, for, I don't think there's an easy way. I, I'm glad you said that because I, I hear this question all the time about what can we do for these people? And there really isn't much you can do. The only thing that we can do, I guess, is to try to get them before they get into the rabbit hole yep. with great information, critical thinking skills, and, and so on. I guess... I guess that's probably where we are is we, we're going to lose a lot of people to these kinds of things, but let's make that pool as small as possible by trying to inoculate people before they get to yep. that. I do level. love, however, have you, uh, if, if any of you have seen, um, what's his name, Matt Delahunty mm -hmm. when uh, at the uh, Atheist Experience, the way he, uh, he answers this when, when people ask similar questions is that if, if they're closely related to you, if, if they're family, if they're friends, avoid talking about it. Mm -hmm. so, so try to talk about something else. Talk, talk about things that connect you, that makes you feel good together, because, especially if, right. it, if it's true, because there are too, mo too, too many emotions involved with this. And I think the same piece of advice goes with people who are in, in, the, in the United States who are split between Trump voters and uh, not Trump voters. Uh, I, I can only imagine how, how terrible it, it, it must be for you. It is. And I guess remember the good times. Keep the communication open if you can, and it keeps you and you can healthily do it. So I need to end it because it's time. 
And that was terrific, you guys. Thank you so much for coming all the way from Denmark. It's one of the only times we can do something like this is during a pandemic, I guess, because we have to do it this way. But I really appreciate it. That was very informative. It's very important what you guys are doing. Lots of great lessons. Um, put all the links that you want in the chat, and I'll try to get them on the videos that we have that are coming up, too. So everybody, please check out their, their website, check out their work, and I'm looking forward to that that article coming out for sure. Thank you very much for having us, and uh, lovely to see and hear your voice again, Susan. Yes, please stay around if you can. I know it's uh, late over there. We will. We will. Okay, fantastic. So let me... Let